Tamisium TE-12000 Extraction Summary The process begins with a pressure-checked full-solvent delivery tank. The solvent has been placed in the tank and then has been pre-chilled or heated to the desired starting temperature. The solvent delivery tank has just recovered the solvent from a prior run and should be cold to start. For volatile extractions, we recommend normal butane that has been cleaned by distillation using the Tamisium extractor. Step 1. Attach your solvent delivery lines. Connect one end of the solvent delivery line to the top of the solvent delivery tank's liquid siphon center exit valve. Connect the other end of the solvent delivery line to the top of the column liquid center inlet valve. Step 2. Attach your recovery lines. Connect one of the three ends on the recovery line to the top of the column vapor outlet on the side and the top of the extractor tank vapor outlet as indicated. Connect the third end to the recovery line to the recovery tank vapor inlet valve. Step 3. Begin extracting. After your solvent or solvents have been combined and set to your desired solvent temperature in your solvent delivery tank, you can then use the heat input on the solvent delivery tank to create the head pressure to expel solvent from the liquid siphon line in the solvent delivery tank into the column of the plant material to prime with a full liquid saturation soak at any desired temperature for any length of time. Note, solvent temperatures will not increase by the heat used to create the head pressure so long as the solvent is allowed to expel from the tank during heat input. To perform a temperature controlled extraction, leave the solvent delivery tank liquid outlet valve closed during heat input until you reach your solvent temperature setting commonly ranging from negative 40 to 120 Fahrenheit. To perform a low temperature extraction, you can omit closing the solvent delivery valve. It can be left open until the solvent delivery tank is completely empty. As low as 5 minutes total contact times can be achieved before starting a full recovery of all the solvent from both the extractor tank and column of plant material. Why do all liquid solvent extractions require 4 times more solvent than the column will hold? The first volume of solvent that enters a column is the solvent that does 90% of the extraction. It has also absorbed into the plant matter and will not exit until the remaining solvent from the solvent delivery tank washes it out. The second volume mixes slightly with the first, and the third volume mixes slightly with the second, and so on. It is known that by the third and fourth volumes, very little desired compounds will remain in the plant matter. It is the third volume of the solvent that washes the plant clean of any dissolved compounds. The fourth volume stays in the plant matter and must be recovered from that position. Although these volumes are mentioned as separate actions, however, they flow through in one continuous cycle. Step 4. Soaking. Once you observe the solvent flow out the bottom of the column into the extractor tank, you can stop filling by closing the inlet valve on top of the column. Closing this valve creates a hydraulic vacuum on the top of the column that holds the solvent in the column area. The filter below prevents the liquid solvent from exiting the column. This will allow you to soak your column with solvent for a specific time at a specific temperature to target specific compounds. If no soak time is desired, keep the column inlet valve open until the solvent delivery tank is completely empty. Step 5. Starting Recovery Open the outlet valve in the extractor tank, the inlet valve on your recovery tank, and the connecting valves on both recovery tanks if both are being used to recover in a series. Using both recovery tanks cuts your recovery times in half by doubling the condensation surface area. Open the top column vapor outlet valve last until it has had time to drain sufficiently preventing any solvent from bypassing the column. Be sure your extractor tank heater is set to 90 Fahrenheit to 110 Fahrenheit and your column is 5 degrees warmer to help the heat penetrate into the plant matter. Remember, there is no liquid inside the column to help transfer those BTUs to the core. Although the column is smaller, it will take just as long to evaporate all the solvent absorbed inside. Key note: It is imperative to safety that all butane is evaporated from your column. The process is designed so the column finishes first so long as you use a 1 to 4 loading ratio. Step 6. Draining into the sucker dryer tank. Just prior to recovering all the solvent from the extractor tank, use what's remaining to drain your extract into your sucker tank where the final phase of recovery can take place 
after which the tank can be relocated to another work area where it can be dried down to zero parts per million readings of any tray solvent. Step 7. Closing the wafer valve and removing the column. While waiting to recover the final trace amounts of solvent into the same recovery tank from your dryer tank, you can break the system down to expel your spent column of plant material and reload it to perform another extraction. Or you can have a preloaded column ready to go. Emptying the column is an easy job with the removal perforation plate that expels the column's content from below. If you have not closed your wafer valve already, be sure and close your wafer valve on your extractor tank to seal it so you can safely remove the column to prevent filling the work area with flammable vapors expelled from your extractor tank. This also prevents solvent loss from the solvents that filled and vapor locked your tank. The extractor tank is self-cleaning and will never need to be cleaned so long as you drain it into the sucker tank. It is common to perform as many as five extractions and four recoveries before opening the sucker dryer tank to access your finished product. This allows you to eliminate unnecessary steps involved in removing your product from the dryer tank when extracting repetitively from the same material. The sucker tank also serves as a dryer tank to clean your final product of all residual solvents. Step 8. Resealing and pressure checking any open tanks. Any open tanks will need to be pressure checked again. This will be the sucker tank once cleaned and resealed and the column once filled and resealed. They are pressure checked again each time because those are the tanks that have had their seals broken. If you do not drain your extract out of the extractor tank into your sucker tank, you will need to reseal that tank and pressure check it after removing your extract from the extractor tank. Choosing not to drain your extract from the extractor tank into the sucker tank is not recommended for safety reasons as well as inconvenience, time, labor, and overall cost.